by the time you met uh, Blondon, how big were you, were you getting? Like how much were you buying on a regular basis? I don't know, maybe a couple pounds, 16 pounds maybe. 16 pounds. Yeah, eight pounds, something like that. Okay. At that time, pounds were going for 35,000 a pound, yeah. By the time you met Blandon, how much cash did you have? I don't know, I had a few hundred thousand, for few hundred sure. Thousand. So you, you, weren't, you weren't a millionaire back then, but you were, you were well off. Mm, I was doing good. You yeah. was doing good. I was doing okay. pretty good. So how did the whole Blandon thing come together? Well, see, we were still getting from the Blandon, but we wasn't going directly to Blandon. It was a middleman. It was a middleman. So uh, the only thing happened when we met him personally was that the middleman had got cut out, which dropped the price even more. But we were already getting it from Blandon, technically. Technically. Yeah. You just weren't talking to him. I just wasn't talking to him. Okay. So how did you end up meeting him? Uh, I, I bought him. You bought him? Mm-hmm. So you basically bought your connect. Yeah. So you, you told your middleman, I'm going to give you sixty thousand dollars. Sixty thousand dollars, and you you introduced me to your connect, and you could walk away with that sixty thousand. Yep. And then Blandon paid sixty thousand as well. To to meet you. Yeah, to meet me. So so the connect got one hundred twenty thousand mm -hmm. to essentially walk away from that part of the business. Yeah. Okay. I see yeah, he got spooked. I heard, you okay. know, somebody had got busted. He was trying to get out of the game. He was trying to get out of the game, so he felt, you know, he'd take 160000 go back to uh, Honduras, and live like a king. 120000 120000 120, And that's what he did? He left? I guess, yeah, for a while. <laughs> okay. So now you're working with the Connect. Blendon. Yep. How is that relationship different than your previous relationship? Uh, we got, we got a lot of tighter, you know, me and Blandon hung out a little bit together. You know, I would go over his house. The other guys were more meet on the street, switch cash for money, you know, money for drugs and, and it's over. But me and Blandon, we kind of hung out. We talked about business. Uh, uh, so, so we developed kind of what I thought was a friendship as well. Okay. Now Blandon is the one that actually took you to the next level. Uh, technically, yeah, and, and, and no, you know. Explain. I mean, we took each other to the next level. Okay, I see what you're saying. You know, I wasn't, uh, I, you know, I wasn't out here helpless and, and homeless, you know. When I met him, I had a few hundred thousand dollars and I had clientele. Uh, um, I knew the streets, you know. I knew all the shot callers from every hood in L.A., you know. So, so he helped, but you know, not not by himself. According to some some articles that I looked up, that I looked up, and you could tell me whether this is accurate or not. It said that you were making up to three million dollars a day. I've had days that I made three million. You had a three million dollar day. Yeah. Okay. A few of them. A few of them. Explain how you have a three million dollar day. Well, your big customers come through, a couple of them, and they drop off two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars. There were um, three or four spots that I had in L.A. where guys that stood out on the street that would make a hundred thousand dollars a day, each one. Each one. Yeah. Now this actually built up. I guess you had operations in forty-two cities. I don't know how many cities. I mean, a lot of cities. We had a lot of cities all throughout the country. Yeah. So, so explain to me and, okay. You know, different people do their estimates and their calculations yeah. and, and and all right. that stuff. So, uh, and I guess the, the other thing is that you moved nine hundred million dollars worth of cocaine. Or more. Or more, which in today's dollars is the equivalent of two point five billion dollars. So you were moving. You figure like this here. If you do 100 kilos in one day, that cocaine goes a lot of places. You know, a lot of people, they taking it, they putting it on airplanes, they, you know, they moving it around. Now you're talking about you move 200 kilos in one day or two and a half, 250. You're talking about a lot of, that's a lot of cocaine. Okay. If you were to stack up 250 kilos right now, how, how big would it be? Would it cover this entire room? No, no. 
Two hundred fifty kilos is not that big. Maybe maybe the size of that couch. That's it. Yeah. And that's the equivalent of three million dollars. According to what price you're getting. Yeah. What time it is, you know. Uh, you know, one time I paid as much as forty eight thousand for a kilo. So. Um, Three million won't go for it when you're buying them like that. Right. But uh, if you're getting them for ten a kilo, you can buy three hundred. Okay. So uh, all that all that factors in, you know. And I, like I said, I paid as much as uh, well. I paid thirty, thirty-two, thirty-three hundred for an ounce of cocaine. And if you add, if you add that up, you're talking about like a hundred grand for one kilo. Uh, but for the whole kilo, I paid forty-five thousand and forty-eight thousand cash for one, uh, uh, um, and I've also bought them for nine-five. Right. As low as nine-five. So, how how were you actually getting this much cocaine on a on a regular basis? Were you getting it once a week, every day? A hundred keys every day. Uh, you were getting hundred kilos years. every day. My last two years, yeah, every day. Every single day. Oh, absolutely. Can you say how you were actually getting it? In the trunk of cars. So, so Blandon would would basically. You'd have up. a driver to pull up wherever I wanted it dropped off, and they pull it there and and leave the keys under the floor mat. My my guys would get in it and take it to where I wanted. It. Okay. How big was your actual crew, in terms of people? that answer directly to you. Obviously, when you're talking about hundreds of kilos, it's going all over the world, and there's all types of people. I understand but, what you're saying. Yeah. Like, if you see the, 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 the special they did on CBS called LA Gang Godfathers, I think they had me surrounded by about 25 guys, okay, 30 guys who were like my, they call lieutenants. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it varied from time to time, you know. Guys quit, get fired, you know. Get busted. Get busted, which was rare. Why was it rare? No, I, mean, I taught my guys how to sell and how to how to avoid the law. Okay. So they were pretty good at avoiding the law. How did you really manage a crew like this? Because when you talk about money, this much money, you're talking about drugs. You're talking about women. <laughs> you're talking about uh, violence. You're talking about gangs. And then you're also talking about law enforcement. How do you really manage a crew of this many people and keep it from just falling apart in, in, in an afternoon? Which, well, which happens the first all the thing, time. The first thing you got to do, you have to really be humble in yourself and always look at situations from the other person's point of view. That's one of the things that I do. I always try to see your point of view first because I know to you the most important thing is your point of view. You don't care about my point of view, but your point of view is always important. So I usually go with your point of view, and most of the time is how can I get food, shelter, and clothes? Okay. Those are motivating, really, really high motivating factors. So if you can provide those to most people, they'll give you their attention. I mean, you're going to run into some, though. That's, you know, you can give them that, and they're still going to be, what did we call it earlier? We were talking about it earlier. I forgot what it was. But we were talking about uh, shady or something like that. Yeah. Uh, or shysty or something we called it. Yeah. So no matter what you do, you still can run into those type of people. But, you know, you, you just, just be able to, to roll past it. Okay. So you had 25 people, roughly. Allegedly, yeah. moving up to three million dollars a day in product. Some days. On some days. And there'd be days where there's two million. Yeah. A million and a half. Okay. A million two. They don't really portray Chicago like that. And um, he did a lot of funny shit with it, man. And uh, it just made me laugh at certain moments. And um, I think that wasn't really, I think that wasn't smart to do it like that. We were sitting in and like, you know, the energy just started getting thick between us. And then 
I was getting aggravated. He was getting, he was like, oh, I think we should leave. And I was like, yeah, I think you should leave. So I was like, get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean?